Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the United States national laxative shortage. Yes, we've reached code red, or really code brown as a nation. Companies that make products like Miralax and Dolcalax have reported shortages. Also, the product Chillax appears to be in short supply. People aren't chill. And a lot of news articles have put forth a lot of explanations for this, one of them being that people want budget Ozempic using laxatives for weight loss. Some TikTok users claim the products are as effective as drugs like Ozempic with a cheaper price tag. Which we're going to investigate, you know, is it TikTok that is causing all of this? And really it is a complex issue and there's so much to learn here. But underneath it all, there is a huge nationwide fundamental issue lurking under the surface or right under under the toilet seat, but we'll get to that. Let's just go. Real quick background that you need to know. There are different types of laxatives, really several types of laxatives. Here's a chart breaking them down. And some of them are simply just fiber supplements. We have the class of lubricants and just lubricating your system. But the ones that are in short supply appear to be the fiberless ones that are a little more intense in how they act. We have, for example, Miralax, which is polyethylene glycol and then we also have that Dolcalax, which is bisacodyl. Bisacodyl is considered a stimulating laxative because it stimulates the enteric nerves in your intestines and then leads to peristalsis or colonic contractions. It also happens to increase the fluid content of the stool, just like osmotic laxatives, which are a different class, which include that Miralax or polyethylene glycol, which is not to be confused with ethylene glycol or antifreeze, but it, it is petroleum derived as well. It acts on its quote, excellent moisture retention and lubrication ability which also helps in industry. And studies just seem to abbreviate it PEG or PEG. So if you take this stuff, be prepared to be pegged. <laughs> I couldn't resist. But there is a bit of a long list of sketchy symptoms with this one. FDA reported symptoms in kids is a pretty long list that ends in rages. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, I think that could be the result of constipation as well. <laughs> so either way, now that you have that background, yeah, that shortage began a couple weeks back and the uh, Dolcalax spokesperson said that they have seen unprecedented demand you know, and that there might temporarily be some empty shelves. And Miralax had some similar reports. Here's the news. The latest trend involves using laxatives as a quick fix to shedding pounds. Some TikTok users claim the products are as effective as drugs like Ozempic with a cheaper price tag. And the Wall Street Journal was the first big one to cover this, I believe. And they had quite a quote from Dr. Pavlou, head of the Gastroenterology Association of New Jersey, quote, it's crazy to think that our collective bowel dysfunction problems have gotten so bad that we're literally running out of stool softeners, AKA laxatives. But then we got a second round of news articles all saying that budget Ozempic as a trend on TikTok was sort of the main reason this was happening, but I have a, I have my doubts. And for those of you that don't know, Ozempic is an effective weight loss drug that is in short supply and can be quite expensive. So people want a budget alternative. I did a video all about Ozempic recently. I'll link it below. And as this article mentions, there are nearly 60,000 new prescriptions being written for Ozempic each week leading to shortages. So we got Ozempic shortages. And I had to just look around on TikTok being like, oh, I should obviously find somebody being like, hashtag budget Ozempic, here's what you do to lose weight, take laxatives. I did not see any of that. Maybe it was deleted, but what I did see was a lot of people on Ozempic experiencing constipation and needing laxatives and talking about laxatives. And some of the blame for the shortage is being put on young people. Yeah, just trying to follow TikTok weight loss trends. And apparently there's truth behind this from Futurism. Dr. Jenna DeLossi, who is an eating disorder specialist, rarely saw teens using laxatives for weight loss, but now she gets three to five patients per week who are doing that. She says that they often mention hearing about it on TikTok. How I went from this to this in three days. Now, with a deep dive, I couldn't find the exact videos people are talking about. Maybe it can be as subtle though as videos of a skinnier woman who says, oh, I was stupid for using laxative for weight loss when I was younger. And then the teen's like, oh, laxative for weight loss, going for it. 
and then they tell their friends. And this is where I just quickly need to mention that across the board experts are like, don't use laxatives for weight loss, not just because they have risks like dehydration and electrolyte imbalance, but also just because they don't actually work and why they don't work makes quite a bit of sense. And that's because you generally absorb the calories which turn into fat higher up in your digestive system than the colon where these laxatives are actually acting. So all of that has already been absorbed. <laughs> to echo that from nationaleatingdisorders.com, the quote, weight loss caused by a laxative induced bowel movement contains little actual food, fat, or calories. Instead, laxative abuse causes the loss of water, minerals, electrolytes, and indigestible fiber and wastes from the colon. So people might superficially feel like they have a flatter stomach or have lost weight, but they might've just lost some water weight, haven't lost any fat, and it's all you know just gonna come right back. So it has no change in actual fat mass or fat content of your your body, but moving forward is really important to mention the connection between using laxatives for weight loss and eating disorders. They can really be the canary in the coal mine or an early warning sign for eating disorders. As this study found, those who reported using laxative for weight loss were six times as likely to be diagnosed with an eating disorder in the next few years. And I will say a lot of the articles actually just straight up blame hashtag gut talk on TikTok, which is just such a wide umbrella of just basic <laughs> gut things of, you know, even just eating more fiber is on there. But if there's any truth behind that, it might just be a new younger generation of people eating the standard American diet becoming aware of laxatives and that they can use them from TikTok. You know, there was one creator on there, a woman who seemed to be wrongly attacked for promoting laxatives for weight loss, but she was actually prescribed laxatives by her medical professionals. Just seeing laxatives working for other young people might <laughs> bring people, again, who eat a horrible diet to the laxative market. Also, just the increasing number of baby boomers has been blamed for this partly. And it is true, elderly people have a way higher rate of constipation. And that's due to a few things like just being immobile. And from this study, a weakness of the abdominal and pelvic floor muscles, can't get things moving. And now let's take a quick break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic. And today, as a sequel to last time, we're going to be talking about constipation and gut dysbiosis. But I should mention that one of these little capsules has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains that are scientifically shown to support various areas of health like heart health, skin health, gut barrier function, as well as digestive health, which includes regularity. And in the modern world, a lot of people can end up with gut imbalances or dysbiosis. And from this study, they say that this disruption of gut microbial communities can cause a variety of changes that lead to functional gastrointestinal disorders, specifically constipation, and that the gut microbiome can influence receptors that mediate enteric neurons and gastrointestinal motility. But most importantly, we have this randomized control trial on one of these strains in seed that found significant improvements in the number of weekly bowel movements and in the main troubles associated with evacuations, particularly consistency of feces and ease of expulsion. And Lindy and I have been taking seed since 2021, so for several years and loving it. And if you would like to try it, of course, you can click the link below and use the code Mike at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. All right. And at this point, I do need to mention that there are some quite serious potential risks of laxatives beyond just your classic symptoms that have come out in the literature. For example, from this study, non-fiber laxatives are associated with about twice the risk of colorectal cancer with regular use. And while this second study on the topic found the same thing with laxatives, they also found that fiber laxatives actually lowered the risk by about 56% for colorectal cancer, although the trend was not statistically significant. And finally, we have this study, which was in the journal Neurology and found found about a 50% all-cause dementia increase with regular osmotic laxative use. And while these could end up being causal down the line, they could just be correlation, or we could just have a root cause for these two separate things. For example, eating a high meat, low fiber diet could independently cause 
constipation. But as we know, meat is a carcinogen that causes colorectal cancer. So that, that could be the connection there as well. And more on fiber in a second, but it really does seem like there's a perfect storm of a lot of these factors coming together. Another one that has been pointed to is simply the sort of going back to the office and working from home hybrid work schedule that can mess with people's just bowel movement <laughs> frequency. And then we also have something that I haven't seen any of these mention, just the large amount of opioid use, just recreationally and non, and opioids just have a really high rate of constipation associated with them as well. In addition to that ozempic constipation, you know, those are two medical reasons I haven't heard people mention in these articles. But moving on, there seems to just be a large underlying issue, and that is just what has been described as an American constipation epidemic. And I will say this is probably the most important focus because we can have these short-term trends, which yeah, we need to be aware of, but below all of that, what is really driving laxative use and constipation has to do with our lifestyle and diet. Now that should be where our main concern goes in the long term, and not to shame anybody, but from my personal experience, just walking into bathrooms, public restrooms sometimes, and hearing the screams. Sounds like I'm entering the seventh level of hell. I feel really bad for these people. I'm like, let's solve this. How did I not make the jokes in the bowels of hell? Because yeah, from this study, well, it ranges the constipation rate in the US is roughly 20% or one in five. How many of them are using laxatives? Well, from this 2020 study, which found that 24% of people were constipated, about half, nearly half of them were using over-the-counter laxatives. So let's just say it's 20% in the US. That means we have about 65 million people who regularly experience constipation. And then on top of that, we have 30 million people who are regularly buying laxatives. So yeah, this is a huge industry. From Statista, over-the-counter laxative sales steadily rose by nearly 30% since just 2017 to $1.7 billion per year in 2022. I think you're starting to get it, but what's really causing this beyond unique medical reasons, we just have to go back to that statistic that I've mentioned before from the Institute of Medicine that 97% of people in the US are not meeting the minimum fiber recommendation, are literally fiber deficient. People in the US eat a measly 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day, despite the mainstream recommendation of like 20 to 35, depending on gender and stuff. But looking to fossilized poops in terms of what the human body was likely doing historically, uh, yeah, they report about 100 grams per day from measuring those. You know, And I'm lucky based on other factors, but I will say that in the decade, 12 years that I've been vegan, I haven't experienced any meaningful constipation anecdote. There you go. But looking past anecdotes to the Epic Oxford data, this study found that yeah, vegans poop a bit more than vegetarians who poop a bit more than meat eaters in terms of frequency. And of course, constipation is defined as the frequency of poop. So yeah, vegans have the lowest constipation rates. Goes without saying that they have the highest fiber consumption. They also have the added benefit of naturally hydrating plant foods, eating more of those, which helps with constipation. I'm not saying vegans are perfect. There are vegans out there that certainly get constipated, but just in general, the chances are gonna be way lower. <laughs> and just because whenever I talk about fiber and constipation, there's always some Somebody that links this small non-randomized trial. The study claims to have taken constipation people off of fiber and their symptoms got better, they pooped more, but that doesn't jive with meta-analyses like this, way higher quality data, 16 randomized control trials concluding that fiber supplementation is effective at improving constipation, quality of data matters. But back to that little study, people on a carnivore and low carb diet use that as like the holy grail for why fiber is horrible. But guess what? We have studies that looked at low carb diets and constipation. And here is one randomized control trial over a hundred people, low carb or low fat diet. Well, the low carbers had twice the reported constipation rate. Here's another randomized control trial, even more dramatic results. Yeah, after a few months, about a quarter of the low carbers reported constipation, but only 3% on the low fat, high fiber diet did. So more fiber, less constipation. And this really does have ripple effects on society. A study was like, oh, how much money could we actually save by eating more fiber in terms of medical costs? Well, this one found that up to $13 billion could be saved on medical expenses if people just ate some more fiber, not even that much more fiber. In the end, the current national laxative shortage has a bunch 
bunch of complex factors. It could be that aging boomer population, though I don't think everybody just got old this year. Yeah, it might be budget Ozempic attempts. However, it seems like it's more likely that general awareness of a younger population that was just constipated based off their diet is now like, oh, I can use laxatives. However, there still are likely some teens going and trying to use it for weight loss. Then we also have that crazy changing work schedule, which can mess people up. And of course, medications or substances like Ozempic itself or opioids that can cause constipation. But still at the end of the day, what is really using the bulk, pun intended, of laxatives is just the standard American diet. The main market for laxatives and really the main chunk of suffering that just exists on a year to year basis due to constipation is due to a fiberless diet. No, eat more plants, have less screams of agony on the toilet <laughs> anyway. And of course, if you would like to try seed, I always have the craziest sentences before I say try seed. Uh, you can click the link below and use the code of Mike for 25% off your first month supply. And of course, let me know down below what you thought about this. Are there any factors in this constipation epidemic and laxative shortage that I did not think of, let me know. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey, it's Mike here, and today the US's National Laxative Service. <laughs> I think we might need one.